You know, if you really want to do yourself a disservice when it comes to your photography, there's one simple thing you can do, and that's ignore and not refine your post-processing skills. Don't get me wrong, I know when I first started out, I really didn't want to invest too much time into post-processing. I didn't really want to learn Photoshop at all. But when I finally took that plunge, I could see a vast difference in my work. You can go out and capture an epic scene, get a decent enough composition with some nice light, but if you get that raw file home and you don't really know what you're doing, or at least you haven't refined your skills and have the right vision for your work, then you're really selling yourself short. So in this video, I wanna do a little instructional here on how to create some depth, how to create separation in your raw files. We've got two example images. We're gonna look at a forest scene, and then I wanna pull up a nice sunrise image as well. And with the forest scene, um, we're gonna jump in straight away and create that tonal depth. And then on the sunrise, we're gonna start from the start and work all the way through and apply the same principles. So let's have a look here. This image here is a focus stack and I've already applied the stack and you can see we've got that infinite, infinite depth of field all the way through the scene. Now, one of the hard things with forest scenes is tonal separation. How do we basically simplify the scene and start to separate the main elements? That's what we're trying to do. Now with this composition, I was really enjoying the light first and foremost back here to draw the eye in and then this balancing act where I had these trees on the right, this large one on the left, and then finally in the center. So I really like that progression as the trees kind of bounced and flowed the eye from front to back. The problem now is with this raw file, a lot of it is starting to blend together, particularly in the far distance here, you'll see that, you know, this tree on this far right, that is further away than these trees that are on more towards the center of the frame. But unfortunately, we can't really tell. And same for this one in the distance here, that tree is right back there, but it doesn't really appear so. The only way that we're getting that indication of depth is the progression of size. We're getting the larger trees in the front, progressively getting smaller. But one other way that we can really show depth, and this just happens out in nature, and if you've seen my videos, you've seen me talk about this before, it's that atmospheric perspective. Now I wanna show you a little trick here to create this, and you can do this in all of your scene. What we're gonna do is basically create a gray layer and then essentially paint in some gentle atmosphere in the background to create the illusion of depth and separation and basically press back those trees. So this is the workflow. What we're gonna do is go straight up the top to layer and we're gonna say new layer. And then we're gonna get this option come up. I'm not gonna name it, I'm just gonna push okay. So now we just have a new blank layer. Now what I'm going to do is hold shift and push delete. And it's gonna ask us to fill this layer. And what we wanna have is the 50% gray selected. And then on the blend mode, we wanna select screen. And now we're gonna push okay. So straight away there, we basically have that gray layer. Now, the last thing we need to do is over this side where it, above the layers, we have the normal option. We just wanna select screen here. See now that that layer is becoming somewhat transparent. We're on the right path here. What I'm gonna do now is reduce the opacity on this layer about 50%. Now all of this number here, whatever, you pick what you like. You see it doesn't really matter too much because we're about to reverse this and mask it in gradually. So to do that now, I'm gonna create a mask which is down the bottom. It's the rectangle with the circle in it. I push the mask button and now we have our mask here. At the moment, this layer is still 100% visible. What I wanna do on the mask, I'm gonna click on the mask, and now it's active, and I'm going to invert it, which is essentially going to turn it off. Um, to invert, I'm gonna hold Command and push I. If you're on a Windows, it's Control I. And now you see that the mask is 100% black, which means nothing is visible on that mask now. What I'm gonna do is now get a brush, because when you're working with masks, to reveal or conceal, we use a paintbrush and we use either black or white. So we know this whole mask is currently black, which is not revealing any of that layer at all. We're gonna push B for brush. This is my brush here. And I wanna have white over this left-hand side. The top color is what you're using. So we've got white at the moment, or you can push X on the keyboard to change it. Gonna make the brush a little bit larger using the open and close brackets next to the letter P. 
And what we're going to do now is basically click and start revealing that gray layer. But the key now is we're only going to reveal this gray in the distance because that is how we're going to create that illusion of depth because in nature anything further away will have less contrast the blacks far from the distance will not be as dark as anything closer to the viewer on the brush the last part the opacity i want to start weak i'm going to start about 25 percent this way i can gradually build up um, the results so what we're going to do is click now and I'm running that along this right hand side and you'll see straight away the difference that's made. My goal is to basically run through between the trees. Now, I'm not being too critical and you know, zooming right in and fine tuning it because I'm using a soft brush. So the soft brush means that you can see the hardness there is at 0%. It means that if the edge of the brush just skims some of these close trees, we're really not gonna see too much of the effect because the edge of the brush is very weak and it's not doing too much so i don't have to be too critical and this is the way that i like to work with my processing it's just using brushes you would have seen me do this mainly using the adjustment brush in raw or if you use lightroom you can use it in lightroom as well but i wanted to show you this way here the cool thing about doing it this way is that it's incredibly non-destructive because we're not actually affecting the pixels in the distance here we're now just actually adding that gray layer on instead of lifting the existing pixels up and making those brighter. So we might just hit back in the center here a touch more and I just keep adjusting that brush size as I run along. I'm gonna go in the distance here and maybe a slight amount more between these guys. This tree in the center, that is also further away than our front two. So I might also do that one, but I'm gonna really dial it back and about 10%. You know, what we're doing is what painters have always had to do. They've had to create that sense of depth using the paint on the canvas. And what they would do is they'll typically work from the distance and then progressively move forward. And with the distance objects, they're always starting off far lighter and then they build up the darker tones. So that's kind of what we need to keep in mind as photographers with these raw files. Let's keep that background more faded out and muted and then progressively let the contrast build up as we move in. The tricky part with photography is we come home with a raw file and if we go too ballistic on the contrast, we're just gonna completely ruin that three-dimensional sense of depth. All right, so I'm gonna leave that there. Let me turn that on and off now and you'll just see what has been done. So that's before and that's after. So hopefully you can see how much that starts to allow these main trees separate from the background and also separate from each other. Now let's move on to a completely different scene altogether and keep this same principle in mind. This time we're starting on the raw file. This was just a beautiful sunrise uh, captured recently. Now I'm gonna do the quick workflow to balance out the dynamic range, but then we're gonna keep that same principle in mind, this time just using the adjustment brush. So the first thing I'll typically do on a scene like this is apply the landscape profile. Sometimes you'll find on these images, maybe that's a little bit too much because there's a lot of color in there already. But in this case, I still think it's fine. I'm also just gonna straighten that horizon partially, make that larger for you guys and just move that to the right. I'll just use the up and down arrows lock that in about there. Now, moving straight away into the light panel, this is what I'd call balancing the dynamic range. I'm gonna brighten up the whole exposure because I want every tone to come up evenly. Then I'll pull the highlights down partially. Not too much though. I'm, I don't like them up in the sky, but I wanna make sure that I keep all those subtle highlights in the lower portion. If I go too crazy on the highlight recovery, we're losing all the beautiful highlights down the bottom. So we'll do that locally in a minute. Same with the shadows. I'm gonna raise those up a little bit. Now, this is the part that's gonna get interesting because we wanna make sure that remember, say the hill back here, we wanna have less dark value on that compared to these trees. And then these trees lighter than these trees. So we've got a few layers to progress through, not to mention the foreground as well. If we just grab the global shadow recovery, what's the problem? The problem is now, the dark values in the front here are almost similar to what's going on in the background. We need to do that locally. So I'm gonna do maybe say 25 on the global shadow recovery, but now we need to start working locally. If we do before and after, 
you can see we've already made some decent progress just on the global stuff. Um, lastly, with the color here, probably won't do too much. Pretty happy with where it's at. Cool it down a little bit. It's all subjective here. Won't waste too much time on that. I'll just close that down. I'm gonna push K now for the adjustment brush. Again, if you haven't seen me process already, check out some of the other videos. Um, you guys know all too well how much I like to use this tool. It is the main tool that I use and I do set the feather flow and density to 100, which gives us a nice soft brush that I can click and apply straight away. First thing I do is just darken the top half of that sky to push the eye down back to the center of the frame. I'm gonna be careful as I hit that tree. This is why I use a soft brush. So if I use the edge of the brush on any of these objects, it is quite subtle. Now I won't go as dark as I did, probably something like that. I'm gonna push K, gives me a new brush and it resets it. Let's start building up that depth now, just like we did in our forest image. How are we gonna do it? Well, one way I like to do it, raising the shadows and the blacks, and then we will even rehaze. But let's start with shadows and blacks. I'm gonna click in the distance here, run that along, and I will stop now. I don't wanna hit that tree. That tree is closest to us, isn't it? So it shouldn't be as lifted as that background. Let's turn that on and off. So you can see before and after. We can then go in and tweak further if you want to with the shadows or even the blacks. The next thing I wanna show you is using the rehaze. So we could grab the dehaze and go left, which is rehazing. That's giving us a pretty heavy result. I'm gonna reset that, push K for a fresh brush, and this time just rehaze only on the distant plane, which is back here. I'm gonna click and just run that through there like so. I'll show you the mask, that's where it's running. And now let's tweak that rehaze. See what that's doing there? So it's really helping emphasize that atmosphere and creating that separation. Pushing K one last time. Now I'm gonna do shadows and slightly on the blacks and just apply that to our tree. A little bit in the foreground, not too much though. It's gotta stay a bit darker back there. All right, close that down before and after. That's where it was. That's where it's at. Let's turn off the brushwork and see the difference or the brushing dig. So that's where you could say, all right, cool. You got a good photo. You captured some nice light, pretty standard comp, but it works. Look at the difference with our local adjustments there, helping lead the eye. Now I'd probably go a few steps further. Let's do K for this brush. And I might actually increase the contrast Bring the exposure down just in the front here. I think we're probably a, a little bit too bright, like this. The next thing I do is give us a bit more light in the background, okay? And this is side light coming in. The light is basically, well, it's not quite side light, it's actually backlight. You can see there's no light hitting anywhere except the cloud. So it's rising behind this ridge line. Why don't we just give a reference for that light? One way I like to do that is bringing up exposure slightly, warming up the brush with some temperature, even a tiny amount of tint, and then the key is rehazing, and I'll just, about here, somewhere where you, the light was basically coming up, and let's just turn that up a little bit more for the exposure, so you can see what that's doing there. It's really nice to have an indication of light within the frame. I'm gonna push K and this time bring up some whites on the brush. White is light. And I will now just hit really where we want the eye to go, which is all that beautiful mist in that middle area. The composition is all based around that hill, that mountain in the back with the layered atmosphere. I wanna make sure I draw the eye there and I can do that by boosting the light, the whites. I'm gonna go a bit larger. Think of it as dodging. We're just gently lifting the little details. Now I'm getting carried away and I'm just gonna keep running with it a little bit because I like the result we're getting with it. So even hitting the, the foreground greens, it's all lifting it up. Let's have a look before, after. Now, I'm gonna go into the curves and I might just pull the mid-tone darks down slightly and keeping a very close eye on our distant trees here because I don't want to drop those back and undo all our hard work. And now why don't we just bring those mid-tone brights up slightly, something like that. 
The last thing I might do on an image like this is potentially look at the grading. Don't need to warm the highlights because they're already warm enough, but I'm curious about cooling the mids and the shadows just to get some color separation. So as I cool the mids down, you can see those cool tones that are really being emphasized. I quite like that. Just gives us that contrast of cool and warm. Similar with the shadows, we're just gonna jump in, cool that down partially. Let's do it before and after. And then, like I said, if we go back to the brushing one last time, the local adjustments, see how it's flat back there. The tree on the left is rolling in with the trees in the background. Those two mid layers there, those zones, the front and back are also blended together. Now we've got that separation. And side by side. If you've seen me teach, um, you know that this is the point now where I let it marinate. I'm not saying this is finished, but I'm saying it's probably 90% done. Most of my processing, most of my images, it can be done just as fast as what you've seen here. It's all, 90% of it is done in five minutes, basically. That last 10%, that's where I like to now save it. I'll save it as a PSD file, um, which is a Photoshop document, as a smart object. And that way I can reopen that file and then jump in and out of Camera Raw here and then just make further adjustments. Typically those adjustments are gonna be further brightening and darkening, maybe a bit of saturation or vibrance, maybe more of the color grading, but it's typically all of those, but just tweaking it slightly. The reason why I let it marinate is just so I can come back with fresh eyes, especially if I'm teaching like this, we're sitting down, I just hit a point where I feel like if I keep going now, I could actually start to you know, go too far on certain things. So I like to leave it at a point where I actually feel like it looks fine, but I just know from experience that when I look at this later, I'll probably fine tune it slightly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little lesson there. So remember that gray layer, it's a really handy way to just create that extra little bit of diffusion, that sense of depth and three dimensionality. Just create that layer and then gently mask it into your background. We could have done that with this image here as well. But really, we didn't quite need to because one, it already had epic fog and atmosphere back there. And two, we just used our local adjustments, adjusting the shadows, blacks, and then rehazing. And that is something that I do on pretty much all my work. And if I was a painter painting this scene, that's how you'd start. You'd go in straight away using very light paint, begin in the distance, and then progressively move forward with the darker tones. Thank you so much for checking out the video. I really appreciate the support. It's been a great year on YouTube. I've really enjoyed sharing photography with you guys um, and your likes, your comments, your views, your subscription. It all really means a lot. Um, so I hope that you've got something out of the channel this year. I'm all ears for what you might wanna see as we move into 2024. Um, so please let me know in the comments and I'll always get back to you. Thank you so much and I hope to see you again soon.